Can an unbiased cable news channel succeed? Not while Trump is around. In recent days, Fox News viewers have repeatedly been told that the federal indictment of former President Donald Trump is another witch hunt perpetrated by a deep state cabal to protect a corrupt establishment. Meanwhile, tuning into MSNBC will largely lead viewers to the conclusion that Trump represents a long standing threat to democracy, finally facing a day of reckoning thanks to a fearless prosecutor upholding the principle that no one is above the law. It's the latest example of the predictable narratives that emanate daily from the cable news leaders, and it's the kind of coverage that prompted recently ousted CNN chief executive Chris Licht to attempt to rebrand his network as a source of detached and balanced reporting that followed the facts and encouraged viewers to make up their own minds. As we all know now, Licht's efforts didn't work. Viewers accustomed to what CNN had become in recent years deserted, while the staff rebelled. But that doesn't mean Lick's vision was wrong. It just means that an unbiased news channel, in this deeply polarized moment, can't compete for eyeballs with competitors that cater to partisan passions. Just before Lick's ouster, the Post reported, many journalists at the network still compare Lick, unfavorably, to former CNN president Jeff Zucker, who fostered loyalty from his staff by giving them more opportunities, generous contracts and leeway to express their personal sentiments about the news. That last point is key. CNN, the granddaddy of cable news, had once been the unchallenged champion of 24-hour information. But then along came Fox, with point-of-view hosts catering to conservative sensibilities. Witnessing Fox's ratings climb, MSNBC eventually embraced the same strategy, targeting the opposite end of the political spectrum. To compete, CNN had to choose a lane, ultimately becoming something akin to MSNBC Lite, an identity to which it will almost certainly revert to appease its staff and its viewers. That's the world that we, and licked, live in now, and we ought to acknowledge it. Especially since Trump's rise, the cable news leaders pay lip service to journalism and employ just enough legitimate reporters to justify the claim. But their provocateurs drive the ratings. Critics often label Fox News as entertainment, not news. But MSNBC and CNN have been just as bad. While Fox, along with several of its hosts, including the since-departed Tucker Carlson, was guilty of pandering to Trump loyalists by perpetuating his disproven theories of a stolen 2020 election, and ended up paying a heavy financial and reputational price for that, MSNBC and CNN shamelessly trafficked in an unrelenting stream of partisan attacks during Trump's presidency, particularly regarding Russian collusion. But people watched. As Lick discovered, and smaller competitors such as NewsNation know, there's a comparatively modest cable audience for straight reporting. Any examination of today's news media has to start with their approach to covering Trump, and the differences among them are nowhere so starkly delineated as within the cable news universe. Lick's ouster provided the perfect ob Jack lesson. It was precipitated by CNN's Trump Town Hall, which was condemned for platforming the leading contender for the Republican presidential nomination. But what really seemed to upset the critics was that Trump is too good at what he does. He controls live television events more effectively than any other politician. And because of his endless lies, the theory goes, he cannot be trusted to address the American people unfiltered. Trump tells some whoppers, most notably that fraud cost him re-election. In fact, during Trump's presidency, the Post famously documented 30,573 prevarications, differentiating between outright lies and more nuanced, misleading claims, the latter of which, to be fair, were often consistent with the spin heard from most presidents. Since no one has kept a detailed, lie count for other commanders-in-chief, we'll never have a precise comparison. Nevertheless, the trope of Trump as liar extraordinaire has provided some cable news types with an argument to aggressively challenge him, even argue with him, rather than merely interview him. In truth, Americans are smart enough to sniff out lies if they're interested in independent thinking. If they're not, no level of real-time fact-checking will persuade them. But in today's cable news landscape, reporters are expected to serve as avatars for their respective partisan audiences. 
When Trump is someday gone from the scene, it's conceivable that Cable's hyperpartisan fever might break. Until then, there are TV options for those willing to limit their news diet to something less than round-the-clock alarmism. Revisit the traditional nightly newscasts on NBC, ABC, and CBS, along with PBS NewsHour, where I sometimes get to join the conversation. All four recap everything most Americans need to know while generally avoiding hyperbole, fearmongering, and overt partisanship. But beware, you might have to make up your own mind about Trump, with no one accusing you of being unpatriotic for whatever you decide. Can an unbiased cable news channel succeed? Not while Trump is around. In recent days, Fox News viewers have repeatedly been told that the federal indictment of former President Donald Trump is another witch hunt perpetrated by a deep state cabal to protect a corrupt establishment. Meanwhile, tuning into MSNBC will largely lead viewers to the conclusion that Trump represents a long standing threat to democracy finally facing a day of. Republicans plan to capitalize on Trump's criminality for decades. The GOP's alleged hostility to the deep state is nothing more than a setup to co-opt state power for themselves. It stands to reason that once the Republicans succeeded in corrupting the Supreme Court confirmation process to pack it with far-right justices they would turn their attention to the Justice Department. What good is having a partisan high court, after all, if the Justice Department, DOJ, is going to refuse to do the bidding of whatever Republican is in the White House? If you want to truly corrupt a democracy you need to do it holistically to ensure that all the levers of power are working together. It's been a long time coming but it looks like Republicans believe they've finally found their moment. They're now openly announcing their intention to discard all the rules and norms that have governed the arm's-length relationship between the president and the DOJ for the past 50 years. Donald Trump made that clear in his speech at his Bedminster Golf Club on Tuesday night. Donald Trump has always said he intended to do this sort of thing, of course. He cried throughout his presidency, where's my Roy Cohn, the execrable lawyer who mentored the young Donald Trump, when he wasn't serving every nefarious character in American life from Joseph McCarthy to Richard Nixon to John Gotti. When he ran in 2016, Trump told Hillary Clinton to her face in a national debate that he planned to put her in jail and constantly demanded that the Justice Department prosecute his enemies. His attorney generals knew what the boss wanted. The White House counsels all knew what he wanted. In fact, everyone in America knew what he wanted because he openly demanded it in speeches, on television and on social media. The DOJ didn't entirely follow through but they made a stab at it. As I wrote the other day, Trump was plotting behind the scenes against the advice